Podcast. I am your host, Richard Franzi, and this is podcast episode number 1138. Which path are you on? Finding the top career or best major choices or overcoming potential barriers in pursuing a stable career? It doesn't matter which choice you make because you're definitely going to want to be successful in either area as well as happy. That's why I've invited Dr. Richard Allison from Path to Happy Success to join us to tell us about how you can get the best of both worlds. Dr. Allison, welcome to Critical Mass Radio Show. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to have you here. Why don't we get started by maybe you could share with us an interesting story from your professional path? Well, what I'd like to do is give you a little bit of history and then tell you how that path led to a path to happy success. Good. So I was raised in inner city Pittsburgh uh, with absolutely no idea that I'd ever go to to college. I was going to be a fireman or a bricklayer or an iron worker. And a couple of really strange coincidences happened that wound up I got a Ph.D. from Carnegie Mellon University. As an example, the first coincidence was that as I was graduating from high school, the uh, Korean War was just getting over and all the vets were coming back. Mm -hmm. And so... Carnegie Mellon, which didn't have a night school, started a night school for the vets, and they made it very easy to get into because the vets didn't have 4.0 GPAs. Okay. And so a fellow suggested, why don't I think about it, and I did it. And so for nine years, I went to night school and worked a whole bunch of engineering-related uh, projects. And then a second coincidence is just about the time I was finishing my undergraduate work, uh, the Russians were shooting Spudnik off, and we're starting to beat the U.S. in the space war. So mm -hmm. all kinds of money came flying out of the government and big industry for higher education. And so out of that, I got a fellowship to get a Ph.D. So I did. So I wound up uh, someplace I never expected to be. But then I, I, uh, I got a job with a boutique geotechnical firm. that was a well-known worldwide firm, but it only had about 50 people. And after a couple of years, the owner asked me if I would be interested in sort of doing corporate development work. And mm. I said he wanted me to try to build the company to be something larger. And so I said I would do that. And it turns out what I basically was was a in-house corporate entrepreneur. And so my job was to keep looking for opportunities that might uh, fit with us and be an expansion of our capabilities. And so over 10 years... Uh, we became a nationwide company. Uh, we were doing, we had 650 professionals and we were doing work in environmental waste management, site remediation and mining in addition to the original geotechnical. So that experience, uh, led me to start my own company. Hmm. And so I started my own company. It was very successful. And, uh, after 10 years, I sold it to a New York stock exchange company. And uh, after a couple of years, they asked me to be CEO of that company. So I was CEO. So I had a lot of experience, and I wound up being more successful than I could ever have dreamed of. Right. So up now to, uh, to 2006, I retired, and I was playing a lot of golf and doing some specialty consulting and traveling the world. And uh, in 2014, I was in a golf cart with a friend of mine who was a very successful CEO of a Fortune 500 company. And we started asking ourselves, how did we get from there to here? How mm. did we get to be successful? And so we got a pretty interesting conversation. And we started talking about friends who also were successful and no one ever saw it coming. And so I went home and I thought, you know, I, I wrote a couple books on technical books on engineering and design, but I've never written a book book. So I think I'm going to write a book on how to be successful. Okay. And uh, the purpose was to help young people who had a, a desire to be successful understand the pathway to get there. And so I started writing a book. I was having a lot of fun. And I was giving chapters to my relatives, friends, and grandkids. <laughs> and uh, when I gave one chapter to my grandkid, who had just, my youngest grandkid, who had just started Chico State, he came back and said, you know, I understand what you're talking about. He said, but I talked to my friends and we really don't care about being successful. We just want to be happy. Uh -oh. And like a bell went off. I thought, right. wow. All of my friends were workaholics. We loved what we did. We get up every morning and we were as happy as you could be. And uh, I did some research and concluded that happiness breeds success. 
it's not the opposite. Success doesn't breed happiness. Mm. So I changed the title of the book to Career, Happiness, and Success. So as I was doing the research for the book, I kept coming across some really alarming statistics about adults, working adults in our country and college graduates in our country. And the, the, the alarming adult thing is that 70 million Americans, workers, are considering changing their job or career. Mm. And 30 million are actively trying to change their job or career. And the reason is they're either unhappy with their job or technology is threatening their career. Right. So uh, a lot of them can't pull the trigger, and the main reason they can't pull the trigger is because they're afraid that if they go to another career that it might be just as bad. Yeah. And they might not be able to make the same salary and take care of their family. Right. So they don't, know, they don't know where to go. A lot of unknowns. So on the student side, the, uh, the average time to graduate with a bachelor's degree now is six years. And the reason for that is kids keep changing their major, and they can't. They got to take a bunch of extra courses. But the really bad part, it costs a lot of money to go the next two years, and they build up a lot of uh, college debt. But right. the, the the real problem is that they didn't get any internships. Which today, if you want to get a job, a good job coming out of college, you better have internships. So without internships, they don't get hired for six to ten months, and then when they do get hired, they have to take a job that uh, doesn't fit their their major at all and un- unbelievable 50 percent of the time they take jobs that don't require a degree in the first place so one of the things you're talking about that you said in the answer to the first question is that you're and i didn't mention that in the open but for those of you that are watching us on youtube or facebook live or maybe later as a as a video uh career happiness and success a definitive path to determine your best career as i said in the open he says it here dr allison says you can enjoy both so let's shift to what is, maybe tell our audience, you're, an, you're a serial entrepreneur, you've started your, your newest company, is called Path to Happy Success. What is Path to Happy Success? Well, okay, I have a little bit more to tell you how we got to Path to Happy oh, okay. Success. Very important. Is when I started working with, with my friends and my, my grandkids with the knowledge of these statistics, uh, I said, what is the cause of this? And, and I turned, determined the cause was that there is no process available for people to determine their best career. The, the processes that do exist are use either personality or aptitude, and they wind up giving you 30 to 50 careers, very different types of careers, with no way to t- narrow down to 30 to 50 to one. And so a lot of people just kind of throw it away because what am I going to do with these 50? So I asked myself, what, what's missing here? And I concluded that aptitude and personality are not all of the personal characteristics that are important for someone to get a, a job that is really good, a career that's really good. So the other ones are, well, first of all, it, it can't be aptitude or uh, personality. It has to be aptitude and personality. In addition, it has to be what you're interested in. What is it that you personally like or, or like to do? What, what do you like to read about? What, and the second one is, what are your preferences? Do you like to work with groups? Do you like to work 40 hours a week? Do you like to be a workaholic? Do you like to travel? And they're very important, and, and, and it, it eliminates a lot of careers. And then the last one is, what are your natural traits? What are the characteristics that make you a unique individual? And so I come up with a five-step program where you start with 30 to 50. And you, uh, One other thing is that I, I learned about a, a massive career database by the U.S. Labor Department called ONET. And uh, Oh, that gives you so much information about careers, I was amazed. But I came up with a process that made it very easy for people to do real quick to evaluate the aspects, detailed aspects of any career. So using this process, we do the first, uh, using personality and, and aptitude, we take the 50 to 30 and we narrow it down to 15 best careers. Then we use interest and preferences and we narrow it down to the top five careers. And then we say, well, of your traits, what you do naturally the best, how do these five careers match that? And we're able to take it down to the best one or two. And then I have a very short process to do a little bit of research and decide which one of these careers is best for me. Okay. So this this was the the birth of Path to Happy Success. I, I thought, wow, if I could take this down, give it to the general public, how many people could we help with uh, solving these bad statistics. Right, and you can help, as we said in the open, you can help, certainly help college 
aged students who are looking at finding a college and a career that will make them happy and successful in their life. But also, as I said in the open, you can help mid-career people redefine their future careers by taking this assessment and figuring out if they're even in the right field to begin with. Correct. So you, you really have two large market opportunities for your software and your program, right? Yes. Okay. And you're looking to reach both. So we're, today we're talking to CEOs and business owners across the country. They may be parents who have high school age children who might be interested in this assessment for their children, but we're also reaching people who maybe could find a new career path, maybe even become an entrepreneur because they could discover something in their future that's brighter than their past has been. Well, yeah, there are two programs, and the, the process works equally well for both programs. The only differences are that in the adult career program, transition program, you have to include how well does your existing experiences and skills fit a career. Okay. Because if, if, you, if they don't fit, then all that time you spent working right. is not going to get you any, any value. You, right. What value does it have? For the students, the, the main difference is that you've got to get to the best career. Then you have to get to what is the best major because in colleges you take majors, you don't take careers. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, and you say that huge, the, the market is like unbelievable. It's 70 million Americans that want to change their jobs and they don't know how to do it. Right. And every year there are 2.6 million high school students who go to college, half of which are not going to realize the benefit that they, that they and their parents thought they were going to when they started college. So, so it sounds like to me some of the m more important benefits are what you say in the book title, success but happiness in front of success because happiness breeds success. And you said your research suggests the other way doesn't work. Success yes. doesn't generate happiness. Correct. So, so what's involved either for the adult mid-career person who's looking to make a transition or the college-age student as far as what do they need to do to be able to get the benefits of your software program? I mean, what's involved from their perspective? The, from their perspective, it uh, requires about uh, four sessions an hour to two hours each. Okay. So eight hours. Taking assessments and yeah, responding. Yeah, it's based on a series of, of uh, matrices. And an interesting part of it is that it's not like a personality test where you, you put in a bunch of answer, a bunch of questions, and you get an answer. Okay. Here, every step, you, the individual, is making the decision on a one to ten scale. How well does this career fit and how well does it fit? So the ones that don't fit get a low score. Right. The ones that do fit get a high score. And by the time you get through the five-step program, you have to have careers that are very good because you've ranked them high all the way through. And it's impossible to get a career that isn't good because you you put them out of every step. You've, you've eliminated them, them you've earlier. Eliminated, right. It sounds like that would actually be almost fun for people to kind of do because you're getting exposed to a lot of the other, other potential careers and career interests, right? So I think there's some self-discovery. Uh, I, I tell you, the, the, uh, in doing this, has been so much fun, but... When I learned about ONET, the, the Labor Department, I couldn't believe it. I was in, I had a career of 40 years and pretty successful working with a lot of people, uh -huh. and I learned things that I never even dreamed of. For example, uh, for most careers, a, the salary, you think about what is the mid-range salary. Right. Well, the, the ONET gives you the mid-range and the high salary, and the high salary is typically 75% higher than the mid-range. Wow. And all it takes is knowing that and saying, how, what am I going to do? to beat the other guy, so I'm not average, I'm a little bit better than average, and you can make 75% more just by doing that little trick there. But I, but I think, Dick, my experience is that if you're naturally good at something and you enjoy doing it, you're going to end up floating to the top of your peer group because you're going to be at the top earning more than the average because you're you don't. it's not like work because you enjoy the work that you're doing. Does that make sense? Well, that's uh, the... Uh, when you think about benefits, I initially was thinking about what are the short-term benefits? You know, the kids, right. the kid doesn't go six years, doesn't waste the money on two extra years, doesn't get to college debt, and the the uh, the adult finds a job that they're happy in. And then I started thinking and talking to people about it. Well, the the long-term benefits are immense. I mean, unbelievable. Because just as you say, for the, for the for either one, the adult or the the kid, if if the kid gets the right major they go get out of, they graduate in four years they're very happy through college because they know where they're going they get a job right away and a good career right and they are on their way up the, right. the ladder the, right. the other 70 percent that that don't get jobs in their career or get jobs that don't require a degree 
the separation is enormous. And the calculations that I do is that the minimum difference is somewhere between eight hundred thousand dollars and a million and a half dollars during your career. Okay. And of course, if you go into the management side of things, that difference could be two, three, four million dollars. I mean, it's a, what a difference right. it makes. Right. And those, but those are second order benefits to the fact that you're doing something that you're good at, that you enjoy, and that you're happy, theoretically, in your life because it's a job that you're successful at. Yeah. I, I, I quite frankly, I can't even imagine what it's like to for 35, 40 years get up every work day, right, hating what you're about to do, go to work and. And uh, the uh, Gallup did a big uh, survey, and they determined that only 33% of American workers are happy with their job. The other 70% are either unengaged or disengaged. Right. The disengaged hate their job, and that's like about 25, 30%. Right. So you, uh, you do that every day, you, and all you're working for is a paycheck. So yeah. the chance of you getting a promotion is kind of almost zero, because why would someone promote you if you're just showing up the Filled in a spot. And that Gallup survey, that Q12 survey, is an annual survey. They do it every year, and people self-report their level of engagement at work. And unfortunately, it's pretty consistently been around that 70% of people that aren't actively engaged in the job that they're doing. It varies a couple percent from year to year. But overall, and and, and I would suggest that regardless of if you're listening to the show either live on octalkradio.net or maybe in the future on a podcast on iTunes, if if you think there's something more that you could be doing with your career than what you've been able to achieve in the career that you have today, that may be because you're not applying your talents right, to the exactly. right position. Taking a test like is offered through Dr. Ellison's organization may give you the enlight what you don't know you don't know about what you could be doing that could change your entire career path. Make and, the, re- and, the rest exactly. of your career so much more enjoyable. And, and the key words are when you go through the process, you wind up with a career that you're going to be, this is critical, you're going to be both passionate about and you're going to be good at. Right. And that's what makes college become much easier because you're taking courses that you want to take. You're enjoying them. Right. Uh, and you're good at it. And you're around other people, maybe right. especially in the upper division courses, who are also enjoying it and it's sort of self reinfilling Yes. Re- right? Reinforcing because you're yeah. around people who exactly. similarly are excited to be there. And then you get really good internships and you meet people in the business and right. you learn a tremendous amount each summer. It's, it's so, so, so this is an unfiltered idea, and I don't know if it's a good one or not, but a thought just came to my mind because I sort of walked that path when I left the corporate world 10 years ago. And, and being an entrepreneur, I built a career that allows me to do what I think I do the best at and that I enjoy the most, and, it, and, and it's been very rewarding for me. So your, your assessment may even help people who want to be an entrepreneur to figure out a little bit more about what industries or how they might craft their career even without a job, if you understand. I know sure. your tool and isn't they, made for that. They probably could also determine whether they could be an entrepreneur or not. I mean, right. do they have the characteristics to be an today? Can they take a risk and so forth? Right. So so I would have to believe there are other organi- – we only have a few minutes left here on Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast That's, with you today. The time has flown by, right? Yes. But um, are – uh, are there other organizations who are discovering, because you're a relatively new startup in the sense of you have a steep career, but this latest venture, Path to Happy Success, is a relatively new endeavor for you. Have you found other organizations or colleges or, or work programs that are they're excited about what you're doing and looking oh, yeah, to help you? Yeah. We, we have, a, and when it comes to marketing, the everybody has no somebody that needs us. So the right? market is like infinite. Right. But you can't market everything all at once. And so what we've decided to do is market groups and look for groups that have a high probability of wanting to do this thing. And so, like for the adults, there's there's now uh, groups in every city. There's groups of transitioning career people who yes. are trying to help each other. Right. And they get very interested. Wow, here's a, here's a product for a couple bucks. I can, uh, I, I can do more than just talk about it. I can actually learn. There's... There's a uh, unemployment offices uh, is another place where if you could get someone to work uh, six months earlier, they're going to save a whole bunch of money. Right. Uh, others are military is and the military is very excited about this because when everybody's re- getting out of the military, uh, they're getting GI Bill money, but they don't know what to do. And so yes. for a couple hundred bucks, you can they can learn what to do, and the money is right there to do it. Uh, another uh, that unexpected is the uh, retired professional athletes. Hmm. They spent their entire life playing that some sport with never given a thought to what they're going to be. And suddenly, 
and, and of course, the ones like uh, they get all the, the sponsors make a bunch of money, but right. 80 percent are kind of almost broke. Right. So uh, and they don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They go bankrupt. Right. So the the the, uh, the National Football League, for example, they're very interested in in talking about. They want to talk about having this for each of the retired NFL players, so they can get some idea about what to do next. So this is very exciting. I know you're doing this almost as a give back to humanity as it is to an, as an entrepreneurial venture. I've heard you say something similar to that, and I really appreciate the fact that you're doing this for the good of the population, not just for yourself. If someone would like to learn more about your company, how do they find you online? Where do they go to find Path to Happy Success? Dave? The, 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 the web page is exactly that, www.pathph, the number two, happy H A P P I and not a Y and success dot com. Path to happy success. And it goes through both of those programs and talks about the problems and the solutions and uh, uh, the, the benefits and uh, the, the, the web page is very good. This is almost uh, too good to be true in the sense that a couple sessions and a couple hours and a few hundred dollars can deliver a person. Uh, a lifelong successful uh, career if they choose to follow it. It's unbelievable. Has the potential to do that, right? <laughs> yes. So thank you for taking this interest and using that mind of yours to, to help so many people. I really appreciate you being a friend of the program. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And a part of the Critical Mass community. So yes. thank you, my friend. Right. All right, that's going to do it for this show, Critical Mass uh, radio show and podcast. I'd like to thank our engineer, Paul Roberts, our producers without whom we could not do this show, Joan Park, Crystal Nunley, and Haley Stern. If you'd like to connect with me on social media, let's start with LinkedIn. I am Richard Franzi, F-R-A-N-Z-I. And until our next show, I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction.